We're actually going to cover two types of divisions in this section. We're going to cover sort of that easy um, case where we're just dividing by a monomial. So let's go back and review some definitions, okay? In Chapter 5, when you guys watch the video, remember seeing, you know, polynomials, right? Okay, so polynomials in general will just these strings of x's and constants, and uh, the constants, the coefficients, could be anything as long as they were real numbers, and then the exponents were the ones that were very specific. They had to be non-negative, and they had to be whole numbers, right? Okay. Well, each one of those sort of chunks of a polynomial was call, called a term, right? Everybody remember that? So the coefficient together with its x, that those two things multiplied together, we considered a term, right? And then the terms were separated by pluses and minuses. Okay. So depending on how many terms there are in a polynomial, we name it based on that. Okay? So mono standing for one, if you call if there's a polynomial with a single term, you're going to call it a monomial, okay? Because it's got a single term. It's a single term polynomial, so it's a monomial. So what do you think you'd call a polynomial with two terms to it? A binomial. Okay, what do you think you'd call a polynomial with three pieces to it? Trinomial. And after that we quit naming them anything special, we just call them polynomials after that. But so a monomial is just a polynomial with a single term present. Okay? And so the first type of division that we're going to look at is dividing any polynomial by a monomial. Okay, so you're dividing any polynomial by a single term. Okay? Well, if you look at this, the problem we're looking at right now, we've got one, two, three terms in the first polynomial, right? And then we're dividing by a monomial, right? We're dividing by a single term. All right, so if you look at this, these three, there are minuses between the terms, right? And so we think of this as, you know, the preschoolers holding hands, right? We can't separate them. Okay, so if we're going to divide that whole polynomial, it means we have to divide every one of those terms. Okay, we can't divide one without dividing them all, right? It's still, again, they're all holding hands, so if you do something to one, you have to do it to all of them. And so to kind of demonstrate that better, we write this division problem in the, what we call the vertical format. It just means write it looking like a fraction, okay? So that's your first step up there, right? We went ahead and wrote, wrote this problem so it looks more like a fraction, right? Okay. And so now, remembering the fact that you can only divide this if you're going to divide everything on top, we divide everything on top, okay? The three terms, the three terms are connected, right? They've got minuses between them. Okay, so I can't separate them. I can't take one without taking them all. Okay? And so if I'm going to divide, I have to divide every single one of those terms. What does it look like? Simple. You just write this problem in three separate pieces. Okay? So each term on top gets divided by that monomial on bottom. Okay? So like you're going to have the 40, x to the fourth, y cubed divided by 10, x to the third, <coughs> y cubed, <coughs> then minus, so that's your first one, right? Then you do the same thing to the second and the same thing to the third. Okay? So we've got the 20, x cubed, y squared, divided by, again, that same monomial from the denominator, right? Whatever we do to one, we have to do to all, so it's going to have to be the exact same division. And then finally, you do the same thing on the last one. Okay? Does everybody, I mean, does everybody see why we're not just dividing one, we're dividing all three of them? Exactly. They're little kindergartners holding hands. Okay? So, I mean, really, if, if you're having a hard time, picture this, okay? Picture three little kids holding hands, and you grab one of them. What's going to happen? They're all going to come, right? Okay? If they're all holding hands, as soon as you grab one of them and say, hey, come with me, you're going to get three of them following you. Okay? 
Same thing here, okay? So you want to divide one of them, so all three are going to come along, okay? Well, now that we have all three of them being divided, we simply simplify each one of them separately, okay? We couldn't have done that before we broke it up into three because then it would be like, well, you know, like I only have the 10 x cubed y cubed on the bottom, so do I take the 10 for the first one or the second one, or the, right? Once we've got them in simple little single chunks, we can just look at each chunk individually, okay? So what's 40 divided by 10? Four. four. All right, so the first one is going to be just a four, right? Now let's think about what these exponents mean, okay? So you've got x to the fourth divided by x cubed, right? So that means x, 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 x divided by x, 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 <coughs> right? x to the fourth divided by x cubed. So when you start canceling these, one, two, three, and then that's it, right? That's all you can do. So what's left? X. An x, one x, where? On the top, right? So since it's on the top, we keep it on the top, okay? What about y? Yeah, they, they're gone completely, right? Because you've got y, 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 y. Probably how you guys feel about your homework too, right? So they're all gone, right? They just cancel out. What about the next one? What's well, 20 divided by 10? What about the x's? They're gone, right? What about the y? All right, there's a y on the bottom. Good, because we have y, y on top, right? And then y, y, y on bottom. So as we cancel them, the leftover one is in the denominator, so we have to keep it in the denominator. So we're going to have something like this, right? What about the last one? What's 50 divided by 10? <coughs> and then x is? All right, good. So we're going to have x on the bottom because everything else canceled. All right, so I heard we're going to have two y's on the bottom. Do I agree? Because we've got y1 on top, right, and then y, y, y on the bottom, so... When we cancel, there's still two left in the denominator, so we write that as a y squared, right? Make sure that we're being kind of loose with our vocabulary here, right? We say two y's meaning y times y, right? It's not really two times y, it's y squared, right? Again, we know what we mean, right? So as long as we know what we mean, I'm okay with us using that, but just keep in mind when, you, when we're saying two y's, we mean y times y, which is actually a y squared, right? All right, that's it. Right? We can't combine any of these terms because they're completely different, right? The first term has an x in it, the second term has a y in the denominator, and the third term is just completely different altogether. So we can't combine them, this is it. Okay? So let's try another one. So the first thing you should do is write this in that vertical format so that it looks like a fraction so you can see exactly how this is going to break down into smaller chunks. So we're going to have 16x cubed minus 32x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by 4x. So how many separate pieces will we be looking at? Four. Four. All right. So we'll have 16x cubed divided by 4x. And by the way, once you guys feel comfortable with these, I'm okay with you skipping that first step of writing the whole thing vertically, okay? You can just skip right down to writing the four separate fractions. But for now, just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're going to write every single step, okay? We're all right so far. And now we get to simplify. So we've got 16 divided by 4 is 4. What about the x cubed over x? x squared. Okay, good. Right, because, again, we had three x's on top, one x on bottom, 
So when we cancel, there are still two x's left over on top, right? So we've got an x squared left. What about 32 over 4? And then what about x's? X. Yep, just an x, right? Because we've got the x squared is xx, right? All right, so seeing some, I don't know if it's just the morning looks or if it's just, I'm confused looks, but let's make sure we see this. So x squared is just xx, right? Yep. Divided by x, so one of these x's cancels out with one of those, and we just have an x left over, right? right. What about the next one? Yes, so I heard one half or two left over at the bottom, right? Do we agree? The x's cancel, right? Yeah. And then two over four reduces to a one half. Mm -hmm. yes. And what about the last one? One over, one over x. Good, all right. You guys didn't get tricked by that one. Good. All right, it's not just an x, it's a one over x, right? The fours cancel, but the x was in the denominator, so it has to remain in the denominator. All right, so it's going to be one over x. All right, can we do anything to simplify? No? No. All right. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could trick you guys into uh, combining the 8x with the 1 over x. Because that's usually, speaking from experience, the uh, most common mistake made is the 8x... Because it's an x, it kind of feels natural, like, well, there's another x over there. Why can't we combine them? Why can't you combine the 8x and the 1 over x? Exactly. One is on top, one is on the bottom. Okay? So think of these, again, as labels. You have apples, bananas, peaches, oranges. Okay? They're all different labels, so we can't combine them. Okay? Do you have a question? Would there be a time you actually do combine them? The only time you could is if you could have in the original problem. Okay? So if you look back at this, down here or up here, right? If any of these could have been combined to begin with, then we could combine them in the answer. But, well, if you can combine them at the beginning, you'd probably go ahead and do that at the beginning, right? But if they're, if they're not combinable, quote-unquote, at the beginning, they're not combinable at the end. Because you're dividing all of them by the same monomial, so sort of they're proportionally the same compared to each other. You're like, just really confused. And what, could you reduce? Could you take a two out of the, the first one and then divide? Or is that just, you could, no? No, I mean, the only time you'd want to re, um, take anything out is if you could do it out of the whole thing. Okay. So if I can't take out a two out of all four of them, I just want to leave it like this. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? See, I'm glad to see you guys are actually awake at 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so that was the easy division, right? We're just dividing by a single polynomial or a monomial. What if we're not? Okay, what if we're dividing by a binomial, a trinomial, and so on? This is where the idea of long division comes in. Okay, we have to use long division to do that. Um, so let's refresh. Long division on numbers is something that you guys should have seen by now, right? Everybody, you might not remember it very well, but the assumption is all of you have seen long division performed on numbers at one point or another. What we're going to do is we're going to take that process and extend it to variables, okay? So we're going to take that same long division and apply it to letters instead of just numbers. So before we do that, let's refresh how do we do long division, right? All right, so if you're trying to divide... 624 divided by 4, right? That's, does everybody agree that that's what this really stands for? It's 624 divided by 4 equals, oops, divided by 4, not x, right? Equals? All right, so I'm hearing 156. We'll see, right? How do you do it? I mean, how do you, long division, okay? I don't mean plug into the calculator or whatever, right? How do you do it using the long division? What's the first step? Okay, exactly. Four goes into a six one time, so you put that up there, right? Exactly. All right, so if you guys can't hear them back there, then you take that one and drop it down. So what's one times four? Four. 
and you line that up under the 6, and then you subtract. So you go 6 minus 4 is 2. Then, because 4 doesn't go into 2, you have to drop down the next 2, right? And then you repeat that same process over and over until you're done. 4 goes into 22 how many times? So then you go 5 times 4 is 20. And you put that right here, right? And then you subtract. So what's 22 minus 20? Now does 4 go into 2? No, so you have to drop that next 4, right? All right, what about 4 goes into 24 how many times? All right. And so then you go 6 times 4 is 24, right? And then you subtract. Okay, what do we call this thing down here? The zero. What about that 156? What is that called? The answer. <laughs> yes, and it's also called the quotient. <laughs> now, both of these combined are actually the answer, right? Because... If your remainder was not zero, then you'd have to include it in your answer, right? Okay, so both the quotient and the remainder are actually part of the answer, right? So when we, when we were asking what's 624 divided by 4, and the answer was 156, it's actually 156 with the remainder of zero, right? That tells you that it divides nicely, right? 4 goes into 624 nicely, like as a whole, it's a whole answer. Okay, so we see, okay, what we've done... We divided the 4 into the 6, right? We wrote that answer up on top, lined it up, right? And then we multiplied it down by that 4. Okay, so 1 times 4 is 4. Then subtract. Drop down the next number and repeat your process, right? Divide, multiply, subtract, drop. Divide, multiply, subtract, drop. Until you can't repeat anymore because... 4 doesn't go into 0 anymore, right? 4 doesn't go into 0 at all. And you're out of numbers to drop down, right? You can't drop anything else, so this is it. That's kind of how you know to stop, is when there's no place to go. All right, so let's take this process and apply it to variables. Just so that we're all on the same page as we're going through these problems, here are some terms that you need to know Again, so that when I say them, you know what I mean. We've all just seen where the quotient is, right? The quotient is, yes, the answer, the thing on top. The remainder is what's left at the bottom. Okay, so the remainder, at least, should be sort of self-explanatory, right? It's what remains when you finish the problem, okay? The divisor also should make sense as long as you think of this as a fraction. I mean, this problem right here is actually the same thing as... 4x plus 7 over x plus 2 equals, right? You're taking the 4x plus 7 and dividing it by the x plus 2. And so when we look at it that way, it's easier to see that the x plus 2 is the divisor, right? It's the thing we're dividing by. And that just leaves sort of that main, that numerator being the dividend. It's the thing that's being divided, okay? All right. So, we know what all, this, all of this is called. Let's see how we do it. <clears throat> the first thing, when a division problem is given to you, the first thing you want to do, for, number one, is uh, check, can I use the monomial method? Okay? Am I dividing by a single term? Mm -hmm. Not in this case, right? What are we dividing by? X plus 2, right? So how many terms is that? Two. 2, right? The X and the 2? All right, so too many terms to apply the monomial method, so we have to use the long division. I mean, that's the only other thing we're learning in this course, so that's what we've got to learn. All right, setting it up as long division. You'll write your dividend, and then on the left of it, right, you write your divisor. Being careful to make sure that both your dividend and your divisor are arranged in order, meaning from highest power to lowest power, okay? Um, 
why do we have to do this now and we didn't do it with numbers? Because with numbers, if I wrote down the number 6 to 4, you all would tell me that that's the number 624, right? I mean, if, if I write those digits in that order, 6 to 4, then you all know that that's 624, okay? With polynomials, it's all letters and numbers with exponents, right? And because addition is commutative, that means I can, I can write it as x cubed plus 5x squared or 5x squared plus x cubed, and it's still the same thing, okay? So it's not a set, okay, 6 to 4 means 624, okay? These could be messed up in all sorts of weird orders, and then when, as we keep going through them, we don't know if we're done or not because, well, we had a smaller power here and it wouldn't go into that, but there's later, there's a big power and we could go into it, okay? And so we want to make sure that we have our highest power first all the way down to our lowest power so that when we get to the end, we know for a fact that we can't go into it, we're done, right? There's not going to be a better power later that we could possibly fit into, okay? All right, so is that done on this problem? Do we have a nice arrangement of highest power to lowest power? Yes. Yeah, right, we have an x cubed, then square, then an x, and then the constant means there's no x's, right? So x to the 0 power. So we have 3, 2, 1, 0 for the x's. All right. Once we've arranged this, <coughs> the first real step, okay, is the dividing, right? Think of your 624 divided by 4 example. The first thing you did was you said 6 divided by 4 is 1, right? Or 4 goes into 6 one time, right? So you took the first digit of your dividend, right, the 624, and divided it by the first digit of the divisor. You're doing the exact same thing here. You're taking, and when, when I say digit, we now mean term, right? Okay? Because we're not dealing with digits, we're, mean, we're dealing with polynomials. But so you take the first quote, unquote, digit, the first term of the dividend and dividing it by the first term of the divisor, okay? So what is x cubed divided by x? Right? Because that's like x, x, x over x. So we have x squared left. Now, on the 624 problem, when you did 4 goes into 6, <coughs> One time, where did you put the one? Above the, six. Above the six, right? Okay, because it meant 100, right? Like if you think of your final answer, the final answer was 156, right? So the one stood for 100, so it went right above the 600. We lined up the hundreds, right? So here, where do you think we're going to put the x squared? Over the 5x squared. Over the 5x squared, right? So that we can line up our powers, okay? It's not that you put it above the first thing because you divided the first thing. You line it up by powers, okay? So if the answer is x squared, you line it up above the x squared. And you'll see in a minute why. We're going to be subtracting stuff, right? And you can only subtract things if they have the same exponents, okay? And so that's why we want to make sure that they're nicely lined up so that we can combine them later. All right, so we put our x squared up there, right? Everybody see where it is sitting up here? Okay, so you're at this point in your 624 problem. You did 4 goes into 6 one time, right? This is where you are right now. What did you do next? Multiply. Yeah, you multiplied the 1 times the 4, right? And you put it right under the 6. Again, you lined it up because the 4 stood for 400. Because it's a 1, the 1 stands for 100, so 100 times 4 is 400. Okay, so that's exactly what I do here. You took your answer, that 1, okay, from the top and multiplied by the divisor. So here you take that x squared and multiply it by the divisor. What's x squared times x? x cubed. x cubed, and that's this one, okay? Because you put it under the existing thing, right? Mm -hmm. And line them up by powers. What about, what's x squared times 2? 2x squared, and you line that up under your x squareds, right? right. Why, why do you, like, subtract it when you should really have, instead of being 7x squared, it's 3x squared? So we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. okay. All right, so 
Does everybody agree that this is where we are if we, once we multiply that x squared? Okay, so next, again, going back to our 624 <coughs> problem, we said, once we were here, right, we said 6 minus 4 equals 2, right, so we subtracted the 2. So do the same thing here, subtract. So you're going to subtract this line from the line right above it. All right, so what's x cubed minus x cubed? Zero. zero, right? So we don't write it, but it's there. I mean, it's a zero, right? And by the way, that's kind of an error checking for long division. If you're working through these and you don't get a zero in that first column every time, then you've probably messed up somewhere, okay? Because if we do it right, that first column should always subtract down to zero, okay? So x cubed minus x cubed is zero. What about, this is where your question comes in, right? What's 5x squared minus 2x squared? 3x squared, right? So we're subtracting that second line. So instead of a positive, it becomes a negative, which is why we get the 5 minus 2 is 3, okay? All right, so we're right here on that, right? So on this problem right here, what do you do next? You drop down the 2 so that you can keep going, right? So what do you think we're going to go do on this one? Drop down the 7? Let's see. Yep, you bring down the 7, right? And you bring it down so that you can keep going, okay? You just continue this process until you can't do it anymore. So the first step, remember, is divide, right? So keep in mind, you're dividing the first term, right, of this by the first term of that. It's, think of this as like your new dividend, right? You've, you've done part of it, and now this is what's left. Okay, and so you keep going. So what's 3x squared divided by x? <coughs> exactly, right? It's 3x, which is what this is, right? Because you put your answer above the line, and you line up the powers, okay? So x's should go above x's. Are we still all together? Maybe. Okay. So what do we do next with that 3x? Exactly, right? We take that 3x and multiply it by the x plus 2. Okay. So 3x times x plus 2. So 3x times x is 3x squared, and we line them up by powers, right? And then 3x times 2 is 6x, and again, we line, up, line it up by powers. And then remember, our next step is subtract that second line from the first line, right? Okay, so I like, to, I like to put my negatives there so that I can really see that I'm subtracting, okay? So what's 3x squared minus 3x squared? Zero, right? And then what's 7x minus 6x? X, X right? So there's our X. So what do you think we're going to do next? Exactly. Drop down the 2. Now, all right, I've got several steps in here, so just hold on, think one step at a time. For now, just think of we've dropped down the two, okay? So we've done this, right? All right, so once we've dropped down the two, we do the division, right? So we're saying x divided by x because we're taking this x divided by this x, right? So what's x divided by x? <coughs> One, right? So x minus x is 0, right? And then x divided by x is 1. Mm -hmm. All right, so where are we going to put that one? Yep. We're going to line up the constants, right? The answer always goes on top, and then you want to make sure that you line things up. So the constants should be lined up on top of each other. Then what do I do with that 1? 
Yep. We multiply. So what's 1 times x? X. x. And what 1 times 2? 2. 2. Okay. Okay. What's the final step there? Subtract. Subtract, right? So we're going to have a minus and a minus, right? What's x minus x? Zero. Zero. And 2 minus 2? Zero. Zero. So it's all zero. All right, now... Do you have anything left that you could drop down? No, no right? Does x go into 0? No. no, right? So that's how we know the problem is complete. Okay? So what is your quotient? x squared plus 3x plus 4. Yes, the x squared plus 3x plus 1. What's your remainder? remainder zero. 0. So when you're writing your answer, because in this case there is no remainder, right? The remainder is 0. <coughs> All we have to write is the quotient, okay? The quotient is the answer because there's no remainder, okay? And by the way, on my math lab, it usually will have like a separate box for the quotient and a separate box for the remainder. Okay. Any questions on how we did this one? Okay, here is a summary of all those steps because really what we did is we had four steps that we sort of repeated over and over and over again, right? Once we've arranged the whole thing and written it down the way we wanted it to look, you know, that long division way, we repeated four steps, right? Divide, multiply, subtract, drop down. And again, and again, and again, until there was nothing left and we were finally able to stop. So it's those steps two through five that just kept, get repeated over and over. Okay. Okay. So while we're waiting on some of you guys to uh, finish filling in the notes, you can, the rest of you can go ahead and set up that ne next example <coughs> using that long division format. Why, by the way, those of you that are looking at it, why are you going to need long division for it? Exactly. Because you have two things that we're dividing by, right? The divisor has two terms. It's a binomial. Okay. So setting this up, we put our divisor on the left, right? So we're going to have our x squared minus 2. And then as we're writing this, we've got to make sure that everything is nice and in order, right? So... 5, 3, <coughs> 2, 1, 0, right? Now, some of you might be concerned that we don't have a 4, right? I mean, we don't have an x to the 4th power. Um, and sometimes that could be problematic, okay? Um, and we actually don't know if it's going to be problematic here because we haven't actually worked through the problem, right? Um, if you're concerned with it, which, again, it is a real concern, um, you can kind of leave a little blank, just leave a little space where the x to the fourth would have gone. Okay, so you write your 3x to the fifth, so something like this. You've got, got your 3x to the fifth, then leave a little room, and then write your negative x cubed, and then keep going. And so anytime there is a missing power, you're welcome to just sort of leave a little bit of room in case x to the fourth actually shows up as we're working through the problem. Okay, so... That's sort of a pretty easy solution for missing exponents. All right? Well, we've got it set up, so what do we do first? You divide, right? What? Yes. The 3x to the fifth with the x squared. All right, so we're going to say 3x to the fifth divided by x squared right? What's 3x to the fifth divided by x squared? All right, 3x cubed or 3x to the third, right? And that's because, well, the three is easy, right? But then you have five x's on top, two x's on bottom. So two are going to cancel with two, and then it's going to leave us with three more on top. Where are we going to put this 3x to the third? Yes, over the x cubed. So it's going to go right up here, right? Remember, your answer 
always goes on top of the line, and we want to line them up by powers. So that's the divide step. What comes after the divide step? Multiply. Multiply. So we're going to multiply this by the entire divisor, right? So we're going to have 3x cubed times x squared, which gives us... Remember, when we're multiplying powers, we're adding exponents, right? So that's why we got the 3 plus 2 is 5. And then what about 3x cubed times negative 2? <coughs> negative 6x cubed, and that's going to get lined up with the x cubed, right? Right, so that's the multiply step. What comes after the <coughs> multiply step? Subtract. All right, so you're subtracting, which means this is going to be a minus, right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a plus, right? Because it's like a minus minus. You're subtracting a negative. What's 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth? Zero. So we know that we're on the right track, okay? And then what's negative x cubed plus 6x cubed? 5x cubed. Good. Okay. So we did divide, we did multiply, we did subtract. What's next? Bring down. Bring down. Okay. Bring down and repeat. Exactly. So when we repeat, the first step of the repeat is multiply. Divide. Divide, right? Mm -hmm. And then multiply. All right, so what are we dividing? X squared and five. Five. Exactly. All right, so we're going to do the 5x cubed divided by the x squared. <coughs> and what is that? Everybody agree? Where are we going to put that? Above the 12x. Above the 12x, all right. All right. It's the answer, or part of the answer, so it goes on top of the line, and then it lines up with the x's because it's only an x. Right. So looks like our answer is skipping x squared. Right. And that might have something to do with the fact that the problem was skipping x to the fourth. Right. Okay, so we did the divide. Next we do the multiply. So what's 5x times x squared? 5x cubed. Okay. And uh, what about 5x times negative 2? Yeah, negative 10x. So where am I going to put that? Yeah, under the 12x. All right. Hmm. Interesting, right? I mean, I can't put it here because it's not an x squared, right? It doesn't belong there. It's just a negative 10x. So I have to line it up with x's. Right? So kind of a little weird thing, right? We're lining it up with something that's not even down yet. So what should we probably do? Yeah, we probably should go ahead and bring down the 12, right? So we're kind of going out of sequence, right? We shouldn't be bringing down yet. We should wait until we subtract and then bring down. But the 10x showed up now, so we have to have another x to subtract it from. Okay, so that's why we had to go out of sequence. So that brings us to the subtracting, right? So we subtract, meaning this is going to be a minus, this is going to be a plus. Okay? And if you're curious, what about here? It's a nothing, right? So, yeah, it's just a zero. So what's 5x cubed minus 5x cubed? Zero. Zero. So again, we feel like we're on the right track. And then what about 4x squared minus nothing? Okay, still 4x squared. Seems reasonable, right? And then what about negative 12x plus 10x? Yep. Okay. So we did the subtract, right? So what do we do next? Bring down. Right now, again, it seems like seems like we shouldn't have to bring down yet because we already have a negative 2x down there, right? But 
That actually got brought down last time. So we're going to go ahead and bring down the next, see what happens. Hopefully, we're about done, right? So we're on the repeat. Okay, so we're going to divide, right, the 4x squared divided by x squared. Okay, so that's 4. Where are we going to put that 4? Okay. That takes care of the divide. Next, we move on to multiply. So we multiply the 4 and the x squared minus 2. So what's 4, four times x squared? 4x squared. And what's 4 times negative 2? And so we line those up, right? We line up our squares under the squares and the constants under the constants. And then we subtract. What's 4x squared minus 4x squared? Zero. What about negative 2x minus nothing? And negative 8 plus 8? Zero. Okay. Nothing to bring down, right? What about this x squared go into x? No. No, right? You only have room for an x, but you have two x's to place, like you have an xx to place. Okay, so we can't go any further. This is it. All right, so looking at this, what is your quotient? All right, and the remainder is negative 2x. Okay, now if you're asked to give your answer as separate pieces, quotient, rem remainder, this is what it would look like. Okay, if your question was just written as it was up above like this, okay, then the way you would actually write your answer is you would write your quotient, and then your remainder is actually a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. Because, think about it, if you were to keep going, what you would have to do next is negative 2x divided by the x squared minus 2, right? That's what you'd be doing next, except you can't because it doesn't go into it, and so you simply write it as a fraction. <coughs> Any questions about long division? <laughs>